Good morning, everyone. Welcome board members and guests to the Wednesday, December 7th meeting of the Placer County Transportation Planning Agency, Placer County Airport Land Use Commission, Western Placer Consolidated Transportation Services Agency, and the Placer County Local Transportation Authority. What'd you no. know? <laughs> we welcome the public to in-person participation. In addition to remote teleconferencing, participation is available to board members and the public provisions uh, of government code section 5493E due to the COVID-19 state of emergency proclamation and recommendation for social distancing. There will be multiple opportunities throughout this meeting for public comment. After I open an item for public comment, those joining us by webinar can signal they wish to speak by clicking the raise hand button on the middle uh, bottom of the Zoom webinar window. If you are joining over the phone, you can press star nine and PCTPA staff will call out individuals one by one who have indicated they wish to speak. For those joining us in person, you are welcome to come to the podium. We ask that you or that anyone making a public comment state their name and city of residence. You will have a maximum of three minutes to speak and we will notify you when your three minutes are up. If you're experiencing technical difficulties and are unable to provide public comment during this meeting, please email your comments to Solvi Sable at ssabol at pctpa.net. Because uh, this meeting is being conducted via teleconference, all votes will be roll call votes. Board members, we ask that you state your name prior to a motion or a second. Uh, or seconding a motion for the record. Once an item has been moved and seconded, I will request the clerk to call a vote. And will you meet us in the pledge? Please join me. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you, Bonnie. Roll call. Baker? Here. Broadway? Here. Burris? Here. Dowden Calvillo? Present. Gore? Here. How to Shelp? Joyner? Here. Jones? Here. Wilkins? Here. Thank you. Got it. Uh, AB 361 remote teleconferencing, Mike and yeah. Matt. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chair and members of the board, um, uh, as we have done in past meetings, uh, we're asking you to adopt a uh, resolution to allow um, us to meet in uh, remote settings uh, as long as the governor uh, has the state of emergency in effect. Um, so we're simply asking you to adopt resolution 22-41 to adopt the findings in order to do so. Uh, later on in the agenda, in agenda our uh, legal counsel will be discussing uh, further uh, uh, items that have changed uh, with regards to teleconferencing and, and explaining those at that time. And that ends the staff report. We'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Any questions of the board? Any questions out in the perfect? We have a motion. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Baker. Aye. Broadway. Yes. Burris. Yes. Dowden Calvillo. Aye. Gore. Aye. How to Shelt. Here and jo I. Joiner. Yes. Jones. Aye. Wilkins. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, approval of action minutes from October 18th. No motion. No issues. Just going to. Yep. Yeah. We need a motion on that one. Y yeah, we do. I'll, I'll move approval of the minutes from October 18th. Uh, oh. Second the motion. Baker? Aye. Broadway? Yes. Burris? Yes. Dowden Calvillo? Aye. Gore? Aye. How to Shelt? Here. Joyner? Yeah. Joyner? Yes. <laughs> Jones? Is that the meeting I could have been to? Because if it is, I'll have to. Abstain. Okay. One abstention? You can still vote on it. Yeah. yeah. People always think they can't, but they can't. Okay. Then I. Okie doke. Wilkins? Yes. 
Motion passes unanim or unanimously. Thank you. Moving on, move approval of action minutes from October 26, 2022. Out of show moves. Wow, down to Calvino seconds. Got to earn money. Baker. Aye. Broadway. Yes. Burris. Yes. Bowden Calvio. Aye. Gore. Aye. Howdeshelt. Aye. Joyner. Yes. Jones. Aye. Wilkins. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Agenda review. Uh, staff does not have any major changes uh, <laughs> in the agenda order or items today. However, we do have a couple of uh, typos to correct in the consent calendar for the PCTPA that we'll handle when we get to that point. That's okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Now we'll have public comment. Anyone wishing to speak on an item that's not on our agenda? I'm no? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent calendar. First moves the consent calendar. Um, um, Dowden Calvio second. Well, <laughs> we actually need to make the we have some first. we have some typos first. Staff has a couple of changes to a couple. Well, you, you, you can no. always discuss when a motion and a second is on the table. It's very appropriate. Yep. So. <laughs> just just some minor typos um, uh, that were uh, identified by a, a board member uh, How to Shelt. Um, the items one, two, and three should all be consistent with a date of March 31st and a three month extension. So we will do those and we will also make the letters, we'll revise the letters of task agreement uh, to reflect that as well. Okay. Of March 31st and a three month extension. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, just for clarification on item two on the consent calendar, it says a contract extension. For six months, that'll be revised to three months. Three months, yes. They'll all be three months, yes. And all be March 31st instead of March 30th. Thanks. Perfect. Does anybody on board have any questions about that? Anyone in the public wishing to speak on that? No. Perfect. So we have a motion and a second. Was that, pardon me, was that Dowden Calvillo motion for a seconded? Uh, I think it was the reverse. First motion. All right. Apologies. Baker? Aye. Broadway? Yes. Burris? Yes. Dowden Calvio? Aye. Gore? Aye. Howdeshelt? Aye. Joyner? Yes. Jones? Aye. Wilkins? Yes. Motion passes. Perfect. Moving on, consent calendar for Western Plaster Consolidated Transportation Services. Does anybody have anything on that one? Anyone in the public? No. I'll entertain a motion. Joyner seconds. Motion and second. Sorry. Baker. Aye. Broadway. Yes. Burris. Yes. Dowden Calvio. Aye. Gore. Aye. Howdeshelt. Aye. Joyner. Yes. Jones. Aye. Wilkins. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on, consent calendar for airport land use commission. Anybody have anything on that one? Anyone in the public? No. Sure. Perfect. There's approval. We have Broadway motion. will second. Motion and second. Baker? Aye. Broadway? Yes. Burris? Yes. Dowden Calvillo? Aye. Gore? Aye. Howdeshelt? Aye. Joyner? Yes. Jones? Aye. Wilkins? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to item K. Deanne Gillick, General Counsel for um, the agency. Just want to do a review today for where we've come in almost th three years with the Brown Act and the meeting requirements in COVID. Because as you know, or may know, things are changing. In January 1st, we have AB 2449, which becomes effective, which has some new remote uh, requirements, as well as the COVID emergency is ending February 28th. So those rules are changing too. This is for your uh, education to begin to think about those new rules and how you're gonna participate um, next year and how the agency is gonna be having meetings. So just a summary of the, uh, of the dates, which I just went over, as you recall, in March of 2020, we, we had the COVID emergency um, executive orders. AB 361 became effective in September of 21. Um, the governor announced that on February 28th, those emergency uh, procedure uh, uh, proclamation is ending and those COVID AB 361 procedures are ending on February 28th. And then we have the new uh, law, which becomes effective January 1st. Um, 
Reminder, we can always meet according to the old traditional Brown Act meetings that allow for teleconference meetings. Um, some of those things are in this slide, which says on the agenda, we have to identify those other locations. So for example, Placer County, um, if we wanted to post Truckee as a, as a location that some of our uh, commissioner uh, Wilkins, director Wilkins could participate at, we could put on the agenda that the location in Truckee is a location for a meeting, the public can be there, we would post that location and he could participate by going to Truckee City Hall or somewhere in Truckee as a public location. Those are traditional rules in the Brown Act which apply, will continue and we could always use. Um, the AB 361 requires to make findings um, that there's a proclaimed state of emergency and which we have, which went in effect in March 4th, which is ending in February. And there's state or local recommendations that recommend or requires physical distancing. We have the Cal OSHA requirement, which is what the agency is relying on to do our findings that we did at the beginning of the meeting to allow for our hybrid meetings. Um, the AB 361 requires 30 day findings. That's why you had your resolution at the beginning of the meeting to allow for hybrid or remote meetings under the AB 361. Again, I've said it three times, the dates are changing. Um, the important dates are um, February, 20, uh, February 28th, which uh, the COVID emergency is ending. Um, and we have to think about how do we allow for remote meetings or everyone needs to be in the room and present, the public as well as the board members. So there is um, AB 2449, which becomes effective January 1st, which allows for some relaxed uh, remote participation when there's just cause or emergency circumstances. So under AB 2449, the just cause reasons, here's the statute, which gives um, the board members the reasons why they can participate remotely when there's just cause. The statute sets forth um, caregiving requirements for a child or, or a family member, uh, cont contagious illness uh, prevents you to be there. Um, you know, we've all been in, in the home or most of us, I know I've been where I've had someone in the house um, under quarantine and I've zoomed in. Um, so B allows that to continue. Um, again, undefined uh, physical or mental disability that allow, doesn't allow you to be here or traveling for um, uh, purposes of either this agency or another local agency um, would, would allow you to participate under just cause. Um, just cause requires some procedures. You must notify the agency as soon as you know that you will not be participating or you need to participate under the remote exception. You need to publicly describe the circumstance to say, I've been, you know, there, there's a, a, a physical um, reason why I'm, I need to participate um, remotely or not be present, I'm isolating, et cetera. Um, the board does not need to vote under for your just cause participation. We will see with emergency circumstances, the board has to vote on the emergency circumstance. And there's a limit that you can only do this twice in a calendar year. You can only participate as under the remote exception twice in a calendar year. Here's the other statutory um, definition, the emergency circumstance, a little bit different. Here's the statutory reasons why you can participate under emergency circumstances. It says a physical or family um, emergency prevents you from attending. So similar from the remote, emergency has a similar language that allows you to participate in emergency. Um, again, you don't have to disclose the medical reason, but you have to give a general description. So you don't have to get into details, but you need to say why you're not participating. And you need to make the disclosure as soon as possible because this one requires the board to act. So the, uh, the statute actually says you can vote at the meeting, even though it's not on the agenda. So an exception to the Brown Act to allow you to vote on the emergency circumstance, but the board needs to say, yes, you have emergency circumstance, you may participate under this circumstance. The agency and the board members need to be aware of some of the procedure. The agency, um, you must, for both remote under just cause or emergency, you must disclose people in the room over 18 that are at that remote location with you. So if you're home, you need to say my spouse is here. Um, or I, I, some boards have said, well, what if they're down the hall in the bedroom? I said, you need to use your judgment 
open and transparent. You can, if they're down the hall in the bedroom and they never come, then they're not interacting with you. Or you could say, you know, my, I have a family member down the hall in the bedroom. So um, the, the statute says you must disclose individuals over 18 present. Um, the member must participate visually and audio. Uh, audio. So you need to keep your camera on. OK, if you participate remotely, um, the traditional Brown Act, you know, and the AB 361 doesn't have that requirement. But this new 2449 does. Board members have asked, well, what if someone walks um, through the room? What if I go down the hall? You know, use your judgment. There's no statute or on it. You know, I think some intermittent shut off the camera. And even a board member said, well, sometimes you don't have good wireless communication. You need to shut the camera off so that you can hear and you don't cut out. Again, use your judgment. We don't want bad facts to make bad law if it gets contested. Um, so be transparent, use your judgment. Um, but the statute says your camera must be on. Um, and then we need to, just cause cannot be more than two meetings a calendar year. And both just cause and emergency has different requirements. Um, it can't be, uh, the uh, emergency can't be for more than three consecutive months. And it can be, not mean more than 20% of your regular meetings or like our agency, if you meet less than 10 times or 10 times a year, it can only be 20%, so two times. You meet perhaps 12, I think 11, so you can only meet twice at this agency. The Board of Supervisors or the City Council that meets you know, 20, 24 times a year, then it's 20% and you could get up to four under their emergency. So different rules. So both the agency and the members need to kind of pay attention and track that. Another thing is, um, do I have a slide? Yeah. So again, requires two-way Zoom for the members, but not necessarily the public. So you could um, have that Zoom link for members and the public could just have a call. I think most of my clients are saying we're used to Zoom. We want to be transparent. We will allow a Zoom for the public as well as the members so that everyone can see each other. Um, but technically, there's that distinction in the statute. Um, so on the agenda, if you want to allow for this remote participation, um, it's not required. Some small agencies don't have the bandwidth or the staff or the resources to have a Zoom and have someone, uh, someone participate by Zoom. And they've asked, do we have to do this? And the answer is no. So some agencies aren't just going to allow, are not going to allow the, the board members to have this remote option, at least not initially, um, because you need to put on the agenda, you know, what's the call in? If, so that someone can listen and someone can participate remotely. Again, it's unexpected. You didn't plan it. So it's one of those things you need to be prepared for uh, or to allow the remote participation. At least a quorum of the board has to be here. So a, a back to kind of the traditional Brown Act, which required a quorum to be present, and you could have people call in that were less than a quorum. Again, so we all need to, uh, this agency comes in person. Mm -hmm. Some agencies aren't. We need to get back in the boardroom. Um, if there's a disruption, we need to pause. So again, this morning, I went through the, my mind when there was no volume, we needed to not hold our meeting until we technically had the Zoom. And that's another reason why some of the smaller agencies aren't going to allow it, because they don't have that bandwidth or technical background to, to pause the meeting if there's a technical disruption. And then we need to keep track of that two times a calendar year where there's other rules. So again, the purpose is to provide a staff, the public, and you a familiarity, so we're up to speed. Also to provide some direction to staff. Do you want to allow for the remote participation? Uh, do we want to continue to have the Zoom option? Um, as the emergency proclamation remains until February 28th, um, we can continue to make our AB 361 findings at the big, every 30 days. So January and February, we can use this format. In March, we need to all be here in person um, with potentially the remote access. So again, the purpose is to start to go over those rules, get you familiar, answer questions, give direction if the board has a, a preference to, you know, I, I think staff, we will continue to present the AB 361 remote findings um, unless uh, the board um, has any direction otherwise. Um, and I believe the intent perhaps is to continue to do a Zoom uh, option I, I believe the county, you know, this facility allows for that, but um, if there's direction otherwise, 
um, and open to questions and to provide that direction if, if necessary. Thank you. Any questions? So Deanne, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how I do. SACOG plans on doing all of their committee meetings remotely from here on out. Yeah. As I hear this, yeah. that's not allowable. So if they post remote locations under the traditional Brown Act, for example, all you know, city, locations. well, yeah, that mm -hmm. it needs to be coordinated, you know, city of Lincoln City Hall, Roseville City Hall, you know, or strategically a few locations to allow that the board members need to be in present. There needs to be a quorum physically <laughs> downtown Sacramento, uh, you know, or here for, for the board meetings. Um, because as you heard, the remote and just cause, you know, uh, just cause and emergency circumstances are very limited and we can only do two a year for most agencies. Um, so we need to get back to traditional Brown Act meetings, everybody present or, um, hosting the teleconference locations for remote, for teleconference participation at those remote locations. Okay. And these AB 2449 need to be the exception, truly the emergency. You know, I, my son, I've been sick with COVID. My son's been sick with COVID. I thought I was going to be in present in the last month at meetings. I wasn't. I zoomed in. And, you know, you don't care, but staff can participate remotely. Consultants can participate remotely. The in the boardroom uh, rules are for um, the board members. Okay. May I ask a question? Absolutely. Thank you for your update. I really appreciate it. Yeah. It's very helpful. Uh, so if I got a couple of things, right? So if somebody were to have a meeting externally, they'd have to be posted, right? So um, it, it has to be posted outside your home or outside city hall or wherever it is that you're going to be, regardless of whether or not it's just cause or an emergency. No, that's the traditional Brown Act rules. The just cause and emergency allow you to be in your bed in your bedroom. And it doesn't okay. have to be uh, open to the public. Or you're not in your bed. <laughs> right. So you can be in your bedroom ill right. and participate under the new AB 2449 just cause or emergency exception. And then was the one other where you could actually, like if you're on business, yeah. would be the, because when do you have to notify yeah. 72 hours? Because one of those you have to notify 72 right. hours and it has to be on the agenda. Yeah. So for the just cause and emergency, you don't know it's an emergency. You don't know when you're going to wake up yeah. sick that morning. Yeah. Okay. So they did throw this in. I'll say throw it in from my perspective, because this is a Brown, Act, you know, traditional Brown Act. You know, you're going to be in D.C., and you, you like, I've had some agencies post uh, someone, you know, the lobbyist um, office in DC, and they, they participate under the traditional Brown Act meeting. It's open to the public. It was posted. They participate from the lobbyist office in DC. Okay. That's the traditional Brown Act. This new AB 2449 allows you to do that. You know, you're going to be in DC traveling for the agency. You don't have to post. You use one of your just cause meetings. So you can only do this twice a year. You can participate remotely twice a year. Um, and you this could count and you don't have to post DC and have a meeting, a formal Brown Act meeting location in DC. So they threw this in. Okay, You're traveling so for the eight. Cause, and you wouldn't have to post it outside your Correct. hotel room. Right. Outside your hotel room. And so you, you could can participate just from cause. You could use and but those tallying rules that say you have to be on camera. You, you have to allow uh, the public has to be able to listen in remotely from the meeting and you have to, it's only, you only get two a year. Okay. So the only way you can work from home yes. is if you are dying, have just cause if you're sick or you have an emergency. Right. Or you post your home or, or you post, post your, your home. home. Right. But you still can't only do that. More than no, if you post your home, you can do it every single meeting. You want. It's so the traditional Brown Act rules. The first slide I had were those traditional Brown Act rules that we've relaxed. So then if you had a um, an individual that wanted to participate remotely from their city council chambers, they could always participate remotely from their city council chambers. They'd simply have to notify, notice yeah. it under the traditional Brown Act. And traditional Brown Act, um, a quorum has to be in Placer County. So, um, you know, so you, Truckee or, you know, something else you could, you could post, um, I guess not Truckee. Well, I mean, I, yeah. with the, I mean, the, the quorum is still present. It's here. Yeah. But right. So, you know, we've gone through the, the dance 
with the remote meetings going through, you know, where people are in Reno, people are in, in South Lake Tahoe, does it work? Um, we just have to have a majority here in the room and you can be at a remote location. One person can be at a remote location. And they could always be there as long as they know. So. Yes, right. So Auburn, Colfax, mm -hmm. City Hall could always be posted for this meeting. If technically we can, we can make that work, um, uh, you know, Colfax or Auburn could always be posted if that is needed or necessary. And I have some clients in Older, in Colorado <laughs> County. So some one client's going to always post South Lake Tahoe mm. so that people don't, we've gotten used to not driving over the, right? right? So they're always going to just post the office in South Lake Tahoe for all their meetings now. Mm. Or at least initially. Maybe that's what they're going to do with SACOG. Maybe right. I'm following that too. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Have Eric Johnson ask us, yeah. you know, or others, okay. right? Right. So, so just to refine, the quorum needs to be here in this space or in Placer County? In publicly accessible locations in Placer County. So not necessarily this space. They all don't have to be here. If you have all their location chambers, that's yeah. How you, but that's how you at a do publicly it. accessible yeah. location. That's what I'm saying. The office. That's right. So you can have Yuba City Hall. You can have you know different city halls. At, it's at, it's at out well, in the outlining counties. Yeah. So I don't know that that would work for SACOG because SACOG is a six county region. So would it? But it's that's all, jurisdiction. But that's just jurisdiction. Yeah. So, so it's, all it's anywhere in those six counties yeah. counts as yeah. in its jurisdiction. That's how they do That's it. how they're going to do right. it. You just have to notice it. So you would have to, you know, look, city notice city you hall. the city. Yeah. Notice your city. And hall. then you have to participate from the city hall. You can't like participate from your house. Well, that look right. Correct. And that location <laughs> has to be open to the public. So access. someone's got to access the meeting. The clerk right. of that agency has to access the meeting if nobody's there, you know, because the public might show up. Yeah, or may not. So, okay. It is so much easier just to show up. I know. Okay. So thank De you, Dan. Uh, mm -hmm. Before you sit down, so um, a couple of things that I just want to ensure clarity on my part. Uh -huh. One, um, or actually, uh, relative to posting, is it possible, given we don't necessarily know relative to an emergency situation occurring to include standard language in the agenda that states subject to board acting to allow for this, the communication at that point in time would be so that it's already included and you don't have to have Solvi pulling her hair out at the last minute because something occurred. Yeah, our recommendations are for these agencies that have it down and have the bandwidth to support the staffing to just include on the agenda the Zoom link that you've been doing mm -hmm. to allow and, and many agencies want to do this for transparency. We've learned the public can participate yeah. Yeah. and listen. So just 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 to plan on that and and to have the Zoom link so that you're available. You've got it set up. So if a board member is sick and has to participate remotely, it's the public knows and the link is there and it, it, it's it's feasible. Instead of scrambling the day, the morning of to get the link available. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a requirement. The public has to listen. If you're going to participate remotely, the public also has to be able to listen in remotely. So how do you do that if it's not on the agenda? Yeah. You know, and some agencies aren't necessarily giving the Zoom. They're just kind of a, a, a phone number, you know, but I, I think in, in the board chambers, the Zoom's available to allow the Zoom. Okay. And yeah. then the two yeah. occasions is by individual, not by agent. Correct. By individual. So Sophie has a new job to keep track of how many times did you participate under the new um, just cause or emergency um, circumstances. And I, I find the uh, you have to be on video when yes. you have an emergency and you're extremely ill and we want you to participate, yes. but we also want you on video so we can see how. Yes. So you put doing. your hair back, <laughs> That's you know, and, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Right. Camera has to be on. It's kind of like, right. no, I'm just going to not be participating because I'm right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So we're make sure Thank you. you. Uh, staff, I think staff, you have sufficient uh, direction or questioning. Mm -hmm. Staff has uh, one recommendation because, as you know, we are we are very good at getting our packet out very early, uh, two Thursdays before the meeting. Um, so ideally, if you know you're going to be absent, 
um, if you could please let Solby know before that, that two Thursdays before the meeting, um, uh, that would be optimal for us. So. so I think for January and February, and you know, correct me, my recommendation is we continue to do the AB 361 findings. Um, you know, I, this is relevant and appropriate because we all have been uh, exposed and get exposures and you don't know that. And it allows, allows for that continue if, if the board's comfortable with that and there's justifications to support that. And then in March for staff, as long as it's feasible to continue to provide the Zoom link for the public. And then it is available in the event a board member has just cause or emergency circumstances to, to post. Um, there needs to be a little dis uh, discussion if there's a need to go back to the old Brown Act rules to post a remote location, to post an agenda location and a public meeting location in Auburn or Colfax for this agency or, or Truckee if it can be coordinated. That is something that, you know, a little discussion or, or direction. It can always be in January or February. We need to agendize it if that is needed or and so that staff has that direction. Or, you know, gee, I know I'm gonna be out of town, contact staff which might be indicated. Chair Baker. Yes. Um, I may have missed this, but are you also recommending that as a standard practice, there be an item there for emergency? And if there's no emergency, then, yeah. uh, you know, that doesn't need to be taken up. It can be at the agency's discretion. You know, perhaps the, um, you know, you always go over the agenda. You always, you know, roll call that can be a, a member says, I'm participating remotely because X, Y, Z during roll call. It doesn't have to be on the agenda because the, the at least AB 2449 said you can take action on the emergency circumstances, even though it's not on the agenda. So the action item can occur even though it's not on the agenda. So it's your discretion, how you want to, how you want to set up your meetings. And I have to, the board has to vote on how sick Alice actually is. On emergencies, yes. Alice has to if be it's, sick. If it's just cause, <laughs> she's got just cause and she just tells you. <laughs> okay. No, so, she doesn't look green enough. No, yeah. we're not going to approve that. <laughs> she's out. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Do we public comment? Is there anyone that wishes to speak on this in the public? Perfect. So if there's no further, staff will proceed as I summarized, doing yeah. AB 361, no, no and in March, we'll have a Zoom link and we will all proceed. And if there's a need for a remote location, you know, make the request and we'll work it out with staff and do it as appropriate. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time of really explaining that to us, because as my colleague here said, you know, we all serve on so many different boards and commissions and regional entities. And so this has really made it crystal clear. And I can share that with my colleagues, too. So thank you very much for yeah. doing that. Really, And one of the reasons we all need to become familiar with these changes and the staff report has the statutes and the complete information. Or if there's anything that comes up, feel free to email us, reach out. We can respond. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to selection of chair and vice chair for 2023. Yeah, so staff is asking for action from the board for the designation of the 23 chair and vice chair. Um, so in 23, we'll have chair Jones and vice chair Broadway. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak on it or anyone on this board that wishes to object? <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah let's keep ryan <laughs> so, so just just for clarity it's actually the county and rockland that has this yeah the, not the individual uh, yeah yeah yep. because yep. their appointing agencies may have yep. different so people, so it's so we'll have uh Cluster Cluster county and, and rockland perfect all right we have a motion and a second all right baker i broadway Yes. Burris. Yes. Dowden Calvillo. Aye. Or Aye. Howdeshell. Aye. Joiner. Yes. Jones. Aye. Wilkins. Yes. Motion passes. Perfect. Thank you. So moving on, um, we're going to do um, a presentation, and I've asked. Um, why am I drawing a blank right now? Sorry. I, the guy to your <laughs> <In> Broadway <laughs> to to do the presentation. 
I, I've certainly had an impact on you. Haven't <laughs> I, my brain is fried today. You're I'm already sorry. Checked out. I'm already <laughs> checked out. The thing twice, you know, so that was. Oh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we are. Or we have been very honored to have uh, serving us our executive director, Mike Lucan, um, who is going to be retiring. And with his retirement, uh, we wanted to present you with a resolution. So I'm actually going to move to the podium for the presentation of the resolution. Now I know the reason for the suit. <laughs> we all kind of wondered about that. I just wanted him to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you knew that you knew that was what it would take right? <laughs> all right well mike we we have put together a resolution so I, i'm going to actually walk through that because it's representative of you and then we'll say a few words i will and then of course provide the board with an opportunity but um in this resolution we really want to recognize all that you've done in your role as our leader in helping keeping class or moving. I mean, in essence, you you demonstrated that that was your goal from the day you joined us. And it has been until today. And I know it will continue moving on. You're, we know you're not going away. And of course, we know where to find you. So, so with that, um, whereas Mike Lucan will retire from Placer County Transportation Planning Agency in December 2022, after more than 30 years of dedicated public service, and whereas Mike graduated from Humboldt Polytechnic University with a bachelor's degree in arts and geography in 1988, followed by a master's degree in rural and town planning from CSU Chico in 1996. And whereas during his distinguished career, Mike has worked for various public agencies. His career began as an assistant planner with Keith Companies in Roseville, followed by being hired as an assistant planner in land use planning for Yolo County. Mike was quickly promoted to associate planner and then senior planner, working on community plans, community development block grant programs, housing and economic development at Yolo County. Mike continued his career in economic development with a move to the city of Sacramento and later to the city of West Sacramento. At the city of West Sacramento, Mike began to specialize in transportation, becoming the port, of tra and the port and transportation manager, and later the transportation federal government affairs manager. Mike advanced his transportation career as the deputy director of operations, planning and special projects for Yolo County Transportation District before becoming PCTPA's executive director in 2018. And whereas for more than three decades, Mike has worked diligently in serving the public in fields of planning, economic development, and transportation across the region. And whereas Mike is to be recognized for leading the staff at the agency through various collaborative accomplishments during his tenure at PCTPA, including completion of the 2040 Regional Transportation Plan, the Airport Land Use Compatibility Plan, the Placer Sacramento Gateway Plan, the Placer Sacramento Action Plan, and phase one construction of the I-80 State Route 65 interchange project, as well as the implementation of a fair free transit pass pilot program for Sierra College students. In addition, Mike has directed the advance of numerous regional important if efforts, including completion of the right-of-way acquisitions and advertisement of the construction contract for the I-80 auxiliary lane project, the development of shovel-ready plans to support grant funding applications for widening State Route 65, and completion of environmental clearance and 90% design plans for the Highway 49 sidewalk gap closure project. And whereas Mike is also to, um, is also to be commended for his efforts to inform the public about transportation funding needs in South Placer County through his tireless participation in public events and meetings, and his innovative ideas, such as the kiosk at the Roseville Galleria and live traffic cameras focusing on the region's congested freeway system. And whereas Mike, through his strong leadership and exemplary work ethic, has developed a dedicated team of employees 
who are committed to serving the transportation needs of residents, businesses, and tourists in Placer County. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Placer County Transportation Planning Agency does hereby extend its appreciation and commendation to Mike Lucan upon the occasion of his retirement as executive director and further offers its sincere best wishes to Mike and his family for much happiness, good health, and many blessings in all the years to come. So thank you for your service to our community. I, I just want to say, in addition to um, introducing me to a, an agency outside of the company I work for, to probably the largest number of acronyms I've ever experienced <laughs> and uh, helping me learn them. Um, Mike, you, you've been a, a tremendous leader, uh, whether it's the, uh, the um, freeway patrol and helping find solutions. As you know, that's very important to me. I feel it's important to the citizens of Placer County and our safety. And it's items like that where you step in, you find solutions, and you've done that consistently as our executive director. And I truly appreciate all that you've done. It's been great working with you and getting to know you. And I see you as not only a, a colleague in what we do in the county, and of course, in our community, our communities, given you made the jump over to Roseville some years ago, but uh, also as a friend. So uh, on behalf of the board, I want to present you with a little card and there's a little gift in there for you as well. So thank you for uh, all, you've, all you've done and best wishes in your retirement. Thank you, sir. All right, would you mind hug? Yeah. Thank you. And I will turn it to the board for comments and then we'll let you talk. How's that? So, all right. I'll scream in here. Yeah. Uh, well, Mr. Broadway said a lot of what I was thinking. Um, you've been a, a patient mentor for not only your board, um, but your various boards over the years, but for your staff. And this is, a, I love the acronyms, right? We mentioned the acronyms and the complexity of transportation funding. And, um, you know, you, you, you're a quiet leader, but a determined leader. And that is helped build relationships and ensure the viability of this organization. And, um, you know, I'm just happy to have had the opportunity to spend more and more time with you. So thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, sir. So you can always tell how much somebody has had an impact on their agency and on uh, the work that they do by the number of whereases <laughs> in the resolution. And uh, that was a long list. So for me, Mike, first of all, You've been a stellar leader for Placer. Um, what it was not always easy to stand up for Placer. There was a lot of pressure uh, coming the other direction in transportation planning in particular. Um, for me, what I am very, very grateful for is your constant outreach, your willingness to sit and talk, to inform your board members, uh, of the issues, of the threats, of the concerns coming up so that we can speak from a position of knowledge and uh, have time to evaluate our position on those items before they come to a head. Um, and there have been a couple of times where, uh, well, frankly, many of us were in DC and there was a, a conflict um, down at SACOG. And because of your efforts, we were all able to excuse ourselves to our hotel rooms and jump on Zoom and be present in those conversations when we might not have even known to do so. Um, so I wanna thank you for all of that. I wanna thank you for your leadership and I wanna thank you for your friendship. Thank you, sir. 
Mike, although I haven't served on this board, I have certainly benefited from your leadership here at PCTPA. Uh, you are a regional leader and you've worked really hard to be a regional leader and to make sure parties can work together. Um, you've always been accessible. Uh, whenever I've had questions about transportation issues or things going on, um, even though I'm not on this board, you've always responded um, and provided information that I've needed. And although it's not on this list, I wanna say thank you for your work in helping move, moving forward the baseline road project because that's so important to our region. And you said, absolutely, yes, I'm gonna help try to work with City of Roseville and Sutter County and Placer County to try to get this moved forward and we're moving forward with it. So I just so appreciate how hard you have worked all these years. Um, you have really made a difference in our community. And I really appreciate just your willingness to do the extra things like go to leadership programs and speak there, um, just informing the public wherever is needed. You've done such an, such an excellent job. And I'm really glad to know that you are not going very far away, that you're still living in our community. And I look forward to seeing you um, all the time in your retirement. Thank you, Director Gore. <laughs> I'd like to echo the comments made by my colleagues. Um, I am, uh, I've only served on PCTPA this go around for a year, but I have very much appreciated your work and your accessibility and your passion. You truly do have a passion for this. Um, you, you have worked so well with the partners and um, as, as Supervisor Gore had indicated, really looking out for the region. And so really do truly appreciate that. Wish you all the best in your retirement. I'm sure that you will be actively engaged in the community because that's how you are. So we look forward to seeing you in that particular space. But again, so grateful uh, for all the work that you've done. And it's been um, a pleasure having the opportunity to work with you this year. So thank you. Thank you, Director Dowden, I'll be you. Hi, Mike. I um, want to thank you so much um, for being a mentor to me. I remember we met when I was a uh, supervisor-elect, getting me up and on board with everything I needed to know. And you've always been there for me and helped me out. And, and I'm sad to see you go, but you know, I think it's, I'm happy that you're going to do something that you want to do. And, and I want to wish you all the best to you and your wife and your family. Have a great retirement and um, don't make yourself scarce. <laughs> I'm only sorry we couldn't get your Placer Parkway built before you leave. <laughs> but <laughs> well, transportation projects take a long time. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see those into the future. So thank you, Director Jones. So the county just de declared it your Placer Parkway. Apparently, we'll be Is there a renaming there? that. be a Lucan Lane. <laughs> one lane. One lane. <laughs> Mike, as you know, I'm a, 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 um, a, I consume a lot of transportation throughout the nation. And I look at these plans nationwide and I see what works and what doesn't. And there's so much um, that Placer County has going for it. And you've really been a champion of those projects. Um, I want to thank you for that. I, I can't, there's very few issues that are more important to Placer County than transportation. And um, with the efforts that this board does with uh, our staff does and with leadership, it's so very important what you have done and what this agency does. And I want to thank you for your leadership there and for um, always being there to answer questions and help us along the way. Um, it, it is um, truly invaluable and I hope you enjoy um what retirement looks like. You're going to have to let me know what that looks like. Cause I don't know that, <laughs> that I'll ever look at that, but, <laughs> but enjoy. And we thank you. Thank you, director Baker. Oh, Trinity. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I just want to echo a lot of the sentiments of my fellow board members. And I really wanted to express how much I appreciate the fact that You've never looked at any problem as too small. Um, you know, as you know, Colfax being the smallest city in Placer County, we've had some very major things done for us by PCWA and by Mike specifically. And, you know, I've really appreciated your help in indulging um, my random questions where I hit you at the last minute and absolutely need assistance immediately. And, you know, your availability and constant willingness to answer questions it's really, it would be impossible to overstate how much it's appreciated. 
Um, and I, I really hope that you have a wonderful retirement. And I just have to say, your successor has big shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dan? Best of luck to you, Mike. Yeah, I think the other board members have said it all. I don't, I don't know what to add. Uh, you know, being the at-large member on the board, I, I wasn't sure. Um, it, it's like we've got, you know, city and county leadership on here and I'm the appointed at-large member. So I didn't know, you know, whether yeah. Mike would give me the time of day, right? Uh, <laughs> and uh, he always, <clears throat> I think as Trinity mentioned, he, I think he provides equal access to all the board members and he was always willing to take time to, uh, get me up to speed on issues that I wasn't necessarily abreast of, you know, in terms of what's going on in Western County. So thanks for that, Mike. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, Director Wilkins. Will you take questions? <laughs> sure. So it's your final oh, presentation. I, I what do we got? Just, <laughs> it's public yeah, there might oh, be public oh, yeah. comment. Oh yeah. We are remote. Is there anyone in the public? All right. Anyone? Really, Mr. Garavidian isn't calling in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would say lots of members of the public have have expressed their their appreciation, and I'm very grateful for their comments too. Awesome. So I guess it's my turn to do a little presentation now, and 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 just to say, you know, thank you, um, you know, thank you for the board for your kind words for this gift and. And really, thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to be your executive director for the last four and a half years. Um, it, I've said this to, to many of you, but I'll say it again. Uh, this is the best job I've ever had. To Actually, it's an honor to, to work for the jurisdiction that I've you know, raised my family in for the last 28 years here in Placer County. And, and as I've said, I, I plan to stay for a while. So uh, continue to, uh, to follow what the agency does. Um, but just a, a big thank you. And, you know, one of the things in the resolution that's mentioned a few times is the word team. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't have done this without a wonderful team of staff members in the board and the public and consultants and everyone else, but, but especially uh, our staff. We have, a, we have an excellent staff, you know, including Solvi, Rick, David, Corey, Mike, Jody, um, Deanne is our, our legal counsel, and, and also those that have, have uh, uh, worked for us and, and moved on, Luke mcneil Caird, Kathleen Hanley, Aaron Hoyt, um, and, and those that were here before me. I mean, they, they, they added to that level of teamwork, and, and I'm honored to have led that team. Um, uh, it was, uh, I wouldn't say, a pleasure. Uh, it was also not the easiest thing to do during uh, the COVID-19 crisis, um, but, uh, but I, I wouldn't have uh, traded this for anything in the world. So it's, it was a, a true honor. Um, but again, just thank you. Um, uh, I plan to be involved in, in some of the things that the agency uh, is doing into the future and, and want to help out, um, you know, in, in whatever capacity I can, because um, I live in this county. These projects are very important to me. Uh, I would love to see at least the first couple phases of Placer Parkway built uh, and Baseline Rago Road and, and some of our other improvements. Um, uh, I wish I could stay here forever, but, you know, that doesn't work. So, um, but I hopefully I'll be able to watch those, uh, you know, from, uh, from, from my home in Roseville uh, as this excellent staff implements them. I also want to say that you, you uh, I'm, having spent the last couple of weeks with your new executive director, Matt Click, you are in excellent hands, and uh, and uh, we've been meeting a lot. That's good. <laughs> and and I plan to continue to help Matt, you know, into the future. You know, I've, I've told him and all the members of the staff and others that, you know, uh, I'm just a phone call away. You know, we can always have a cup of coffee and and talk about about uh, you know what's happened. You know what 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 my view of life is uh, reg with regards to transportation. But again. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Mike. All righty, moving on to the executive director's report. I think we'll need a motion. Oh, do we need a motion on that one? It's a reso. Oh, it's oh. resolution. Dowden Calvia moves to adopt the resolution as presented. I will second it. Sorry, I will <laughs> defer to. I hope you don't. Baker. Aye. Broadway. Yes. Boris. Yes. 
Dowden Calvillo? Aye. Gore? Aye. Howdeshelt? Aye. Joyner? Yes. Jones? Aye. Wilkins? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for the unanimous vote. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no abstentions. There was no abstentions. <laughs> oh, um, so, uh, so uh, I have the uh, the honor to uh, give the first half of the executive director's report, and then uh, Matt will be taking over the second half. So, uh, although I don't think I had much choice of, of of doing a resolution, a couple other people that we need to honor today um, actually did have a choice, uh, but we'd like to still uh, honor them anyway. Um, so, the first person uh, who's uh, actually celebrating her thirtieth anniversary with PCTPA is Solvi Sable. Um, I just want to maybe say a couple of remarks first. Um, uh, you know, Solvi is really the heart of our agency. Um, Solvi knows everything that goes on in our agency and and makes sure and keeps us out of trouble. And, and she's a great asset to PCTPA um, for those 30 years and, and for, the, for the foreseeable future until she joins me in retirement. So um, she's also been with the agency since its inception. Um, Mike, don't give her any ideas. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. You didn't hear that. Well, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. That, that, that probably is. Uh, she's way too young. Don't she is. Way, way too young. Yeah, way too young. <laughs> sorry sorry um and just a couple other things and then i'll turn it over to you um you know she's she's worked on many different things at the agency again virtually everything but uh main thing she's done is she she worked uh, on our former transportation demand program uh doing lots of outreach for our community which that outreach then led into the the funding uh, strategy and she was a great uh asset in helping me with uh with uh demonstrating the need for transportation funding in the county. Um, she then uh, was the executive assistant to the executive director, and then she moved on to her, her role that she fulfills now, which is the planning administrator and clerk of the board. So she's had some very, very important roles with her agency. She now leads the, the freeway service patrol program, doing an excellent job taking over for David last year. Um, She's responsible for our packet every month. And, and I, I would say I've never worked for an agency that the packet was done better than, than PCTPA. Yes. Uh, and I've worked for quite a few. And, uh, and, and from the, just the fact that we get it out two weeks in advance, I mean, that's just that's incredible. incredible. <laughs> and she's, she's really responsible. She's the taskmaster that gets that done. Um, she's also uh, the, the, Worked on many of our celebrations um, and and led those, um, you know, whether those are ribbon cuttings or groundbreakings or or meetings of the CTC or or something like or other things like that. She's always involved in that. Always does a great job. Um, and then um, uh, she has trained, I think, four executive directors, five, five maybe, yeah. four. So she does she does a really good job training us on what she do, and she'll she will do a great job with Matt. With Matt. Sure. And again, I she I can't say this, repeat this enough times. She looks out for us, and she prevents us. We can get on all sorts of trouble, and 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 she's always there to say, you know, are you sure? Or you know, <laughs> are you sure you want to do that? And 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 that's very been very very helpful to me and and to the rest of the staff. So with that, I'll be quiet, and and uh, I'm sure you you have some comments as well. I'd love to say that it's really been a pleasure to work with Solvi. I actually first met Solvi on the mat in yoga. So many, many years ago, I knew her. I wasn't on city council at that time. And uh, it was a pleasure getting to know her that. And then it was just really fun to be able to you know, get on this board and have the opportunity to work with her. And really, her talents are are so superior. Mike mentions, you know, getting the packet out and you know, I've spent more than 36 years in government and I've served on many state and local committees and commissions and I've staffed them in your capacity. And I can say that I am so incredibly impressed and it's a big deal getting the packets done on time, making sure they're accurate. They are put together so that they're easy. I mean, we all get a million packets and I'm a paper gal, so I still get them that way. And I really appreciate that so much. I don't ever have to worry about things being messed up. And, uh, but she's really, she solely rocks, you know, she is the heart of the organization and we're so incredibly fortunate to have someone that has 
been here so long. The institutional knowledge, like you know, Mike said, she's training the executive directors because she knows where all the skeletons are. And she knows where the landlines are to keep us out of trouble. So <laughs> congratulations on 30 years. We look forward to the next 30. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say something too, in addition. I know I'm a short <clears throat> short timer with you, Sylvie, but you've always been right there. <clears throat> an email and you're on it like that. Any questions, concerns or whatever. And so I wanted to give you a token of all of our appreciations and pardon the gift wrap because oh. it's the season. And Santa sack. Santa sack. use it and get all warm and cuddly and fuzzy. Remember all of us. <laughs> Thank you. Bear Baker. Fun. Yes. You know, um, you're more than donuts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. There's and the quote of the year right there. <laughs> you're more than donuts. You're, you're more than, but, but yeah, as, as a lot of folks have said, um, you know, you are the heart. Uh, the cornerstone of this organization and it wouldn't be sustained without the institutional knowledge you have um you're so welcoming and so gracious and i don't want to be i don't want to see the other side of it where you have to herd the staff and go uh the agenda packet two weeks but i'm sure you do that with the same kindness graciousness and dedication that um you make sure that we're all um receive here when we come on to the sport. So thank you very much. And go ahead. Paul. Well, I'm surprised to uh, see the agency acknowledge that they were violating child labor laws for so many years. Right. <laughs> so exactly. Geez. It's as my fellow board members uh, have said, we've all served on a great many boards with a great many people doing the work that you do. You were simply the best I've ever worked with. Thank you for that. Please continue. We do not want to lose you. Um, you make my job, our jobs, so much easier. Thank you. Did you have Yes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Sobe, uh, I'll tell you, having had the opportunity as a very new, very unseasoned council member being appointed when Diana Ruslan moved to Georgia and I was appointed in Rockland as their newest member of the council and then given the responsibility to represent our citizens. You quickly brought me in, explained things, and I've always been amazed at whether it's the packet and even going above and beyond the call, helping with the Leadership Rockland program and coordinating our meetings, making the facilities available and working with staff to make things happen. It is amazing, you know, people talk about um, how approachable you are and how supportive you are, yet you get things done. And that is absolutely amazing. And it's reflected in how effective PCTPA is. And it is, as Mike said, it's all about a team and it's all about the members. And you are a key piece of that. So thank you for that. Um, I, I know there will be a time that we'll be, instead of just talking about your years of service and celebrating your anniversary, we will be having you retire, though I hope it's after my retirement. And so uh, again, thank you for everything you do. And I'm gonna hand this to Brian to hand to you because this goes along with the, uh, the gift. And this is just a card from the board thanking you for your, or congratulating you for your years of service. Thank you. Trinity, Dan. Thank you, Solvay. Oh, thank you. oh, go ahead, Dan. That's it. Oh. <laughs> um, Solvay, I just wanted to say I appreciate you so much, especially because I can be a chaotic tornado that's hard to nail down sometimes, and you always manage to get me <clears throat> nailed down so that we can, you know, get stuff done. And I just want to say if every one of our agencies had a Solvi, government wouldn't have a reputation of being so ineffective. So Solvi, you're very appreciated and you are so fantastic at what you do. Um, I just wanted to say, I hope we have you for many more years. I wanna, Dan? Oh, I think you're, you're not done yet. Oh, it's not over yet. Oh, geez. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, thanks, Solvi. Uh, yeah, and thanks for really all the attention you pay to make sure that we as board members are uh, able to participate in the board meetings and have the information we need. It's uh, it's great. It's a, it's a super high level of customer service that you provide, and I really appreciate that. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Bonnie, did you have something? And Solvi, I'm really glad to be here today uh, because 30 years, I remember serving um, on the city's transportation committee. And even before that, when I worked um, at Kaiser Permanente and you did alternative transportation and you would show up promoting um, bike month and all sorts of different things. And what a joy to fast forward all of these years um, and you continue to do such a great job. And you made a comment earlier today and you said, I don't really like change. And You've had a lot of change, but you know, different executive directors and staff members and board members, but nobody would know. You do an amazing job, as everyone has said. And so even though you may not like change, uh, you've done a great <laughs> job at keeping this organization um, going and going well. So thank you. Thank you. Well, Solvi, okay. one more. One more. Okay. One more. Well, I, and I'll make it quick. Oh, uh, really? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to say thank you. You've been stuck with me my entire um, time as an elected. Um, and I just want to say thank you for putting up with my chaos. Um, you have been an absolute dream to work with. Um, and I can't think of um, in my, my elected career or my professional career, um, a person that has been more helpful and more welcoming um, and has uh, really spent the time to, to get to know somebody. And I appreciate your friendship. So thank you so much. Ugh, well, my husband would disagree, but I do not like being the center of attention. Um, but I do want to say, you know, I just, a lot of people have said like, how can you work somewhere for 30 years? But I think, you know, PCTC, it used to be PCTC working over at DeWitt, you know, in the County. And we've just taken on Sparta and ALUC and CTSA. So there's been just new opportunities and new challenges. So I felt like, you know, it's been, it's been a great and exciting career, um, but more than that, I've just worked with some really amazing people. I don't get emotional, but um, that are just so smart and I respect them so much. And um, they're my friends today and they'll always be my friends. And um, so, and I just, I've been really lucky to have such an amazing board. I always feel respected with you. I always feel appreciated by you. And uh, it, it just means a lot. It makes me want to, to do well by you. Um, so I take a lot of pride in my the work that I do. Um, I can't say that I'll be here for another 30 years. I don't think I have that in me. But um, I do have a few more years left. And I think we're going to really do great things together. So I look forward to, to seeing what we got going. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Hey, Sylvie, will you please ensure that in the minutes it does note that that was plural on years? Yeah. <laughs> that does need to be reflective. So to continue on, two down and one to go. Uh, so uh, the, the other person that is uh, we need to, to say a special thank you for today uh, is uh, is Chair Baker, he'll be, he'll be leaving us at this meeting. And so uh, Brian, as he uh, has indicated, has been, has been here his entire career um, and has been on PCTPA since 2015. Uh, he's been our chair this year and the vice chair the year before. Um, he was involved in, in hiring me in 2018. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, a, lot of, a lot of efforts related to the transportation sales tax measure. Um, the upgrade to the Sierra College interchange, uh, streetscape improvements in his town uh, that are very, very important to the revitalization of the town of Loomis. Um, uh, a study that was done uh, uh, in downtown Loomis on, uh, by SACOG on a Loomis revitalization study. 
improvements on Taylor Road, working with both the town and, and the, the county um, on, on improvements leading to Delaware High School. And uh, he, le he uh, led the agency on last year's participation in cap to cap, including uh, being the king of the, the, the scooter. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'll, uh, I'll be quiet and, and uh, let the, the board uh, say any other uh, remarks they would like. I'm going to start. I, I don't know how you do it. Okay. Where were you yesterday? Where were you last week? Right? You, you don't want to know. No, I know. Right. <laughs> And and the dedication you uh, you give to this, uh, you know, this organization, like in your professional life, is so admirable, and your leadership style is so um, uh, inclusive. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to be the next one to speak to, to, to say I know I've been short timers, but you've been immensely helpful to me, especially on the last hiring committee that we were on. I've learned a lot from you. Um, big shoes to fill for me <laughs> coming up. I wish you were staying on the board. We're all going to miss you. And so I wanted to give you a small token of our appreciation. And um, sorry for the gift wrap. but no. uh, I love those bags. <laughs> I mean, I think they're pretty cool. And so anyway, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything that you've done for me in this last year. And um, I wish you the best and everything. And I wish you guys didn't have term limits there in Loomis. I, yeah. I think it's kind of crazy. My district director seems like probably everyone in Loomis has to serve on your uh, your county council. Yeah, it's... <laughs> but at any rate, and, and the reason I'm, I also, I need to, I need to leave because I have a commitment that I have to get down to Roseville too, but I couldn't leave without telling you and Thank giving you, so you something much. for it. Oh, you that, so. You'll have Brian on screen. You'll have him on speed now. Probably. Make sure you, so, so you have his contact information. <laughs> okay, so I do need. And the last thing, too, is I'm, my, I'm having an office Christmas open house this Friday. It's all day, 11 to 4. And I want all of you to know you're all welcome to stop by. And um, here, so here, this has got some, it's got information on where I'm at, the corner of Eureka and Douglas. So to see you all there. And I'm sorry I have to leave quickly, but um, you guys. Have a great Thank you. I would just like to say thank you so much for all of your efforts and you've been a great leader for uh, for this board. It's been a pleasure working with you um, and seeing you at other regional events and I'll miss seeing you at those. Um, but uh, it's it's really been a pleasure. So say, thank you so much. You know, it's kind of like herding cats when it comes to Bruce and myself, right? So just the two of us. It's interesting. It makes yeah. it hard, you know. So, <laughs> so I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much. And we'll miss working with you for sure. Thank you. Hey, Brian, if I may say something, I uh, really have not had an opportunity to work with you on joint boards, et cetera. But I did learn something about you the other day uh -oh. as we were at the giving machine. And I learned that he likes a good smoked tri-tip. And I'm thinking if I had known that I would have become friends with you sooner so that I could have you invite me over for dinner, my husband and I, um, but anytime uh, I, I'll keep that in mind, but I really do appreciate it is not er easy to serve on a city council. It is hard work. I don't think people realize how much work it is, not just the meetings, but the regional commitments and the challenge that you take by putting your name out there and saying, yes, I'm gonna do something that's really difficult. <clears throat> Take hits and, and have people question why you do what you do. But we know that it matters. And your service has definitely mattered to the, to the town of Loomis. And so thank you. Thank you for stepping up for our community because we can't be who we are in Plaster County without people stepping up to help lead. So thank you. Thank you. So Brian, I'm going to keep my comments short because you've cut 20 minutes into my Sparta meeting. Sorry, it's, oh, it's sorry, 10 o'clock. But uh, no. In in all uh, sincerity, you have been a remarkable voice for Loomis, for your community, for your constituents, and uh, an incredible partner here and within the region. And uh, you will be missed. It's I don't know what your uh, restrictions are, but. I suspect in two years you can run again and and rejoin us. Uh, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, thank you. Um, so Brian, most people seeing the end of an assignment or <laughs> an activity that they're involved in start to let off the accelerator, yet you stepped up as chair and clearly never slowed down this year uh, between the focus, continued focus on looking at transportation solutions and then the search for a new executive director, uh, constant communication in uh, discussions about other items too, including things going on in your town and our city and while we don't always agree on things, you were always willing to pick up the phone and have a conversation and work through things. Your leadership has been seen and felt, not only in your community in the town of Loomis, but across the county and certainly here at PCTPA, and you will be missed. And I wanna thank you for your leadership. I greatly appreciate it. I wanna wish you the best. Um, stay awake, stay focused on those drives. And that Tesla is not meant to drive itself. So don't do that. It's in beta testing. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, thank you so much. It's been an honor getting to know you and certainly a pleasure working with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, it's been, been great getting to know you, Brian. And miss seeing you at these meetings. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Yeah, Brian, I think you're going to be greatly missed. Um, I just want to say I, it's really nice to see that there's people in government that are real people um, that are actually relatable. And you're one of those people that actually makes the government very relatable for everybody and very welcoming. And um, I'm definitely going to miss you, especially on our scooter fiascos. Definitely going to miss that. <laughs> so, um but you know what? Keep on keeping on. And um, like Ken said, don't let off the brakes. And uh, hey, if it's Red Bull that does it for you, so be it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I, I have to say I have um, when I um, being an elected was never um, on my radar. Um, I have uh, a very busy professional career um, and it was a, a need um, within the town and um, serving with a board like this, with a staff like this, um, both within the town of Loomis and, and here at PCTPA, um, has given me um, a new respect for government, how government functions, a great deal of professional respect for uh, the leaders here in Placer County. Um, I can't tell you how much um, it is meant to me to, to work with you, to get to know you, um, to be able to reach out when there are, are issues with um, neighboring agencies. And sometimes um, you guys get to put up with my chaos and some of my joking, but I, I can't say thank you enough um, for your dedication to Placer County and to this region. Um, I will be um, hopefully here to help champion you guys through as some of these things come forward. Um, I just, it's so very important, the work that we do here at PCTPA. And so um, I will always, uh, just like Mike, be a phone call away. I might not be in Placer County at the time that I take the phone call, but um, I will uh, gladly always take anybody's phone call here. Um, I, I do appreciate it, so thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, so we've completed those those three very um, uh, important items, um, but now we have, uh, Matt and I will motor through uh, the rest of our executive director's report very quickly. A um, couple of things uh, I wanted to mention was, uh, and we've talked about a little bit, the, the Placer Business Alliance in Washington, D.C. a few weeks ago was a very, very, very successful exercise. And, and a lot of folks uh, uh, on this board participated in that. Uh, we had a, a panel on separately on transportation that was very, very good where we heard from uh, you know, uh, members of the administration uh, from federal highways on a lot of different programs and, and very, very useful and a lot of useful meetings in Washington, DC, outside of PBA. And I think in 
not just in, in the area of transportation, but in all the other areas covered by PBA, it was very successful. And, uh, you know, since I'm retiring, I can say this, uh, a lot more uh, effective than the cap to cap trip. Uh, cap to cap is important, but I think PBA um, was a thousand times better. So anyway, uh, last thing uh, I will mention is that uh, uh, one of our really important projects is out to bid right now, the I-80 Auxiliary Lanes Project that's led by David Melko on our staff. Um, uh, it uh, went out to bid on the 31st of, of October by Caltrans, who is the lead agency for construction. Um, we are dealing with a number of uh, critical issues still um, with pg and &E and some other things, but uh, uh, those bids are now due on January 11th. And we're hopeful that it's going to come in somewhere close to the engineer's estimate. We certainly have contingency plans um, within reason if it does, but uh, but th that's a very very important project that we're hoping to get under construction and completed. Um, uh, the last thing, um, or actually that is, oh, the last thing I will mention is um, we are going to be hosting the uh, the January meeting of the California Transportation Commission. Um, and also holding a reception um, for the for that uh, commission uh, that is going to be held at the grounds uh, in uh, Roseville. Um, we've done that in the past at the Rockland Event Center, um, but this year we're holding it in Roseville, and I, I think they're also they're staying uh, in in Placer County at uh, at one of our local hotels too. So it has an economic positive economic impact uh, on on Placer County. But this is a very very important meeting, um, which uh, we're hopeful that the, the board can participate uh, in the reception and other activities. And uh, uh, Matt and Solby will be uh, keeping you informed as we get closer to that on all the uh, festivities and activities of that important meeting where we can showcase our projects here in Placer County. Do we have the date for that? Um, the meeting, the actual CTC meeting is the 25th and the 26th, and the reception is the evening of the 25th. Okay. That I'll turn it over to Matt. Thanks, Mike. And uh, I'll just go through a few things really quick. I know we're running late. Uh, there's a few things I want to make the board aware of. First of all, future CMAC STBG funding process. You all know that we're working through this with federal highways regarding their corrective action. Um, the, the bottom line on this is that we've been working with El Dorado and SACOG to come up with a new approach to get federal highway to sign off on that, which will just will still give uh, PCT EPA the same sort of authority and funding levels that we've had in the past. We're having a meeting, a, a, a meeting with uh, El Dorado, SACOG and ourselves on the 12th of December to get everything lined up. And then we're looking to schedule that meeting with Federal Highway. It'll probably end up being uh, early January. So we continue to move forward on that. That's an extremely important issue. Uh, we believe we have a path to resolution based on what SCAG has done, what MTC has done, and actually what other MPOs like uh, Chicago has done in CMAP. So we'll keep you, uh, you know, up to date on that. I'll skip over a few minor things and, and point out, um, let you know that we've been out in the community with regards to our funding strategy outreach. We've already had six community meetings um, over the last couple of weeks. And uh, that's really um, sort of kicked off our sort of listening tour uh, around this funding strategy. They've been pretty well attended. Um, we will be getting together with our partners um, in January to come up with our strategy around our next set of outreach, which is gonna occur in the spring. Um, and I also wanna point out that as part of that, we've been out in the community regarding the regional transportation plan update. So um, Mike and Corey and the team have presented at all six of those meetings. They've also had two independent meetings and uh, we'll have another one tonight. If you wanna come by the office, there's a, uh, there's a workshop tonight and then there's another virtual workshop tomorrow night. So in total uh, nine meetings, I wanna thank Mike and Corey and everybody. They've been really burning the candle on that one. And uh, lastly, I'll just close with a, an update letting you know that uh, uh, Director Broadway and I um, met with Congressman Kiley as part of a, a, a delegation of Placer County folks uh, on Monday to talk about various transportation and infrastructure priorities for the county. Uh, we specifically were talking about uh, the Joint Powers Authority, the Capital Corridor Joint Powers Authority third tracking project. Uh, gave them a really brief bottom line synopsis of that, let them know where we were with our gap funding. Uh, and he gave us a verbal commitment to fully support 
uh, our Chrissy application. So that's really good news. Sure. I think we're going to have great partnership with him. Um, and, and then just, uh, I said that was the last thing, but uh, lastly, just one quick uh, housekeeping thing. Okay. What we'll also do is is moving into January, this executive director's uh, report that we're giving you, we'll, we're, we're going to turn this into a staff memorandum. It'll get included into the packet. So uh, you'll be able to, to see that as well. And, and I just want to say, first of all, uh, or, or lastly, um, you know, it's been, I've only been here a few weeks, but, um, you know, I've already seen the impact that Solvi has, and I'm really glad she's not going anywhere uh, at, at all. And I, I am sad to see, see, see Mike go, and I'm happy that he's got uh, the, the phone on speed dial for me. And, um, you know, Mike, the last three weeks of us, you know, I've had, you know, just a constant barrage of questions from Mike every moment, texts at night, and uh, he's been beyond willing um, to answer all of those and help me. So, you know, I couldn't uh, be getting up to speed and onboarding without, you know, all of Mike's support. So I, I also just really want to say, I tell you to enjoy your retirement, but I know you're not going to. So I'm, I'm really happy we're still <laughs> going to have you around and be able to rely on you. But, but you know, 30 years of service um, to, to the both of you, that's, that's, that's a lot. And a lot of people don't, don't do that. And I, having been in and around public service uh, for my whole career, I don't think people really understand uh, what level of dedication that takes and what that means. So I just want to echo what the board's already said. So congratulations. And, you know, thank you for your service. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you. Uh, board direction staff. Hi. Would it be uh, possible, sorry, would it be possible for us to, in January, get a report on the fare free transit program, um, how it's doing, what the plans are for the next semester when Sierra College comes back together. I know we'd had some discussions about getting some updates. I had an opportunity to spend uh, actually a few days this week already with uh, Willie Duncan and there's tremendous amount of excitement and energy about the program. So I think it would be helpful for the board to get some feedback on that. And other than that, because I likely won't necessarily see everyone, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I look forward to working with you in 2023 if I don't have the opportunity to see you again before we wrap around the new year. So thank you. Thank you, Ken. Anybody else? Trinity, Dan, do you guys have anything? Nope. Nope. Just everybody have a Happy New Year. Yep, I'll second that. Perfect. So we have some informational items. And like we said, Merry Christmas, have a great new year and you guys have fun. All Thank right. you.